based in Ralph is an enterprise leader based in the San Francisco Bay Area and and he has extensive um, enterprise agile coaching experiences and you know influencing the adoption of agile leadership of agile tools he's you know he's an agile tools practitioner he's well versed and I can speak um, from my own experience and my own um, friendship with Ralph here that uh, he is well versed in Jira Jira advanced roadmaps and Jira line and um, and just a kind person. I'm so happy to have you here. He, he really is, is also an expert in operational efficiency in areas outside of Agile to, to, really, improve the, um, to really improve the software development life cycle and, and deliver value to the business. So, you know, he, what, what I like about him is he, he really has an objective to align the theoretical principles of Agile with real world hands-on implementation. So many times we hear theory, but we don't get that real world hands-on implementation. So, you know, that, that helps in fostering collaboration and, and empowered teams and, 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 um, and the successful realization of business goals. And, and, and then what it's all about, customer satisfaction. So Ralph, you're a superstar in my book and I'm so happy you're here. And so I'm gonna stop Thank talking. You so that you can get to it. Awesome, awesome. Uh, thank you for that awesome introduction. Uh, I would dare now introduce, introduce myself any further. I mean, <laughs> Jamie, you did a fantastic job. I wanted to thank all of you for being here and welcome. Uh, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm glad that you're here today. Um, we are going to... Um, take a, a, a hopefully a, an overview, a deep dive overview on uh, what JAR or JIRA Advanced Roadmap is. And out of this session, I'm hoping that you um, not only get an understanding about what JAR is, how to access it, uh, the tool that is, and, and also to understand some of the features and capabilities at the high level. Um, I'll, I'll be covering a lot of material. Um, so um, it's easy to feel overwhelmed, um, know that you can always reach out to Jamie or even to me via the email that um, I will be sharing here on my screen shortly. Um, in fact, let me know when you can see my, my screen. Yes, we can see it. Great. Uh, thank you. And so my email is actually uh, how, or how to reach me is at the bottom of the slides. Uh, you can also uh, uh, thank you also for posting my link. Uh, to my LinkedIn, you can always connect with me via LinkedIn and ask me questions. Um, uh, so, uh, and so what I will ask is if you have questions during the presentation, um, jot them down in the chat window so that at the end, I'll, I'll make sure we have enough time that we can actually uh, cover some of those questions as they pertain to specific areas of JAR. So um, without further overview, I will, I will bore you with three slides and then we'll jump into the actual tool because this is really about a hands-on experience you've seen at your advanced roadmap. So you can follow through in some real case scenarios. So um, so first of all, um, um, we're gonna cover in this overview, what is JAR, the benefits of using it. <clears throat> and, and then we'll uh, go into the hands-on and then the Q and A. Um, JAR or JIRA Advanced Roadmap, I call it short and JAR because it's a mouthful. Um, it's, a, it's a planning tool that is actually included in JIRA Premium and JIRA Enterprise Editions. Um, pretty much like other tools are in the market uh, that I have worked with is structure or big picture. Um, the interesting aspect of JIRA Advanced Roadmap is that it used to be a paid plugin. However, um, it's been about uh, four years or so that Atlassian decided to embed it inside of the enterprise edition or premium editions of Jira. So basically there is uh, zero cost and zero configuration because it's already there. So you don't have to go or you don't have to go through the admin or go through the pains of reconfiguring your environment. Um, as you will see when we go into the tool, I'll, I'll showcase where you can find your advanced roadmap in your, in your own Jira instance. 
um, whether it is in the cloud or whether it's on-prem. Um, a benefit of it uh, that you get is that you have the ability of combining um, information from multiple teams that are collaborating in a product. Uh, as in the case, for example, I used to um, work at VMware and I will have a team called vSAN uh, working with the data protection team, which is a separate team, with the NFX team, which is a separate team. And to have all that data in one single holistic view where you can track the progress and see dependencies, it was it proved to be very beneficial in using your advanced roadmap. So um, it gives you capabilities that uh, no other free tool, if you will, uh, has. Um, and uh, your advanced roadmap is shouldn't be confused with uh, Atlassian has a product called roadmap. I like to call it basic roadmap. It's kind of a similar to your advanced roadmap. It's also free but it has a lot of limitations. One of the limitations that roadmap has is that it only allows you to see the information for, from one, one team. And there's a limitation as to the dependencies and the things that you can see in the basic roadmap, uh, which is also free. Then there, there, there's Jira Advanced Roadmap, which is a tool that we're gonna see today. And then separately, there's another offering called Jira Align. And Jira Align is, is, is a whole different board game. It, it's a paid, uh, subscription. subscription. Um, there's there's a, a steep learning curve. It's a very powerful tool. So I want to make the distinction that there are three offerings from Atlassian. The one that we're going to be covering today will be uh, the advanced roadmap offering. Um, the benefits from using a dear advanced roadmap. Um, one of the um, things that I like to point out to tool to teams that actually are accessing the tool is that you have the ability to combine uh, information from Jira, uh, and I will I will showcase that in the in the demo, in the workshop, um, together with um, the ability to have functionality that is similar to Excel, where you have um, rows and columns are editable, and you can do all the editing uh, within Jira Advanced Roadmap, and then have the, the information sync with Jira uh, whenever you're ready. And then you have also the ability to track optics as to the progress over time of your epics, you know, your features and your team's efforts um, in, in a Gantt chart-like view. Like you will see, for example, in a tool like Microsoft Project, for example. Um, I know that a lot of folks look at Project and Microsoft Project and they, go, they think roadmap, um, waterfall, and it's really more about visuals, right? especially to those members of the organizations which are not part uh, of the engineering teams, uh, such as you know directors and VPs, which like to understand where are we at with the project. And again, we'll showcase that. The tool provides, it's not really geared towards a specific role in the Agile um, ecosystem. It's really, is meant to be used by from scrum masters to product managers to program managers to project managers. I even have BPs, which actually uh, use the tool uh, themselves in order to get optics and, and they, they can self-serve information in preparation for meetings that they are going to. Uh, release engineers use the tools uh, to either manage their releases or you know, provoke minimum full conversations during PI planning or release planning. And then when the, once the planning is done, they want to use that same tool to actually track the execution of, of uh, the commitments. Uh, and similarly, I uh, have several teams who have adopted the tool to run also meaningful meetings such as a Scrum or Scrum meetings where you get together perhaps once a week or twice a, uh, uh, once a month or twice a month and talk about across the teams about dependencies and the execution. So um, think of the tool as, as having the ability to see the bigger picture, not just from the sprint level, but from the release level or the PI planning level. Um, and finally, as the last bullet suggests, uh, you can see the scope of work um, in the context of a release so that rather than seeing all the information that is in JIRA, you, you have the ability to filter 
and see the execution at the epic level uh, in terms of progress percentile, which is makes it easy to articulate to those folks which are outside of the team. You know, how much are you know what's the percentile complete of some of the features and the key features that we may have to hit. Uh, we can see dependencies and also manage risks, risk associated with the release, um, whether we are ex ex extending over the timelines or we have um, things that are not done within the due dates. And I will point those out uh, within the tool. Um, so without further ado, I guess it's time to do, you know, um, a quick hands, hands on here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and and the slide deck. And this year, it's um, I, I went ahead and created a subscription to um, Jira myself and recreated. This is not a real project for my client because I do not want it to get into trouble, but it's a real project in the sense that you have the structure that you will see in a Jira environment. You have uh, stories, you have sprints, you have uh, epics. Uh, that have created as well as uh, fixed versions that represent you know fictitious releases. So for all intents and purposes, some of the structures that you'll see here will be similar to the structures that you will see in the companies that you're working with uh, with uh, Jira. And so the question the first question that people ask me is how do I access your advanced roadmap is if it's already there? And notice that in the UI, in the interface, there is not an ent there's not an entry that says you know Jira Advanced Roadmap. When the product was first released, it was called uh, Jira Plans, and uh, this is back in 2017 or 2016. And later on, it was rebranded as Jira Advanced Roadmap. It so happens that Atlassian did not rebrand the UI. So uh, as I'm looking at the screen here that I have in front of me, um, notice where I'm hovering, there will be an entry. If, if plans is enabled in your environment, though you'll, you'll see an entry called plans and plans and your advanced roadmap is one and the same. So uh, it's uh, a bit of a misomen. I filed a bug against Atlassian so that they can rebrand, but I'm sure it's low in their priority. Eventually I hope that they, they get to rebrand it. So, and in order to access it, once you click on the dropdown, if you have been in Jira Advanced Roadmap before and you have seen other plans, it'll automatically bookmark those plans that you have seen in the past. Or typically, if it's the first time, you just get to see these options here, right? So uh, create a sample plan, create a plan, review settings. Now, to create a plan, just to showcase the first um, element here, um, it's relatively easy. And that is, you have a plan name, which in this case, you give it a friendly name. I'm gonna just call my my, my uh, Jira uh, Ninja Turtles, just because I'm, you know, my, my name in Spanish is Rafael and things, people think I'm a turtle, part of the uh, crew there. Um, you define also the access to the tool. So, um, and that is to say, you can have the tool or the plan to be open, meaning anybody who has access to your Jira instance can see the plan, or you can restrict by creating it private. So you'll have access to it, and only those people that you define will have access to the plan. Otherwise, it will be invisible to everybody else. For this, for this exercise, I usually create them as open, um, just because I like to share information with the entire organization. Um, and then the most important part here is also the issue sources and issue sources is very powerful. And by that it's meaning, it means, um, where do you want to bring the data from, right? So you have three options, uh, boards, that is Jira boards, um, Jira projects or Jira filters. And they are not exclusive. You, have, you can actually create a view as a combination. For example, I can choose to have a board. I have two teams in this environment that I created, uh, the OCT team. Um, and if I wanted to add another board for, for another team that I have, 
as long as I have access to their Jira instance, I can type the name of the board, or in this case, I have this additional team called R2 board. But also I can actually combine boards and projects, and there are some advantages to that. Uh, so for example, in this case, I'm selecting the optimized agile team project. And uh, so you can, you know, the theme here is that you can keep adding and combining the different sources so that when you are viewing the your advanced roadmap view, is a collective of all that data from the different data sources. Um, so once you once you create the the uh, uh, create button, um, then the board it's created, and then you end up literally into Jira Advanced Roadmap. Um, now, as I alluded in the slide deck, one of the powerful things about Jira Advanced Roadmap is that it combines um, Jira with uh, Excel-like functionality and Microsoft project-like functionality. Um, so let me just break that down for you. Um, here in the left region, you'll see the epic star associated with the projects that I added into this view. And I can see that I have by the prefix OCT, that's one project and is bringing epics from a second project as well. So now I'm aggregating two projects, if, if you will. And I can see not only the um, epics, but I can see the hierarchy of the stories associated with those epics, right? And so this pane here, this section here, um, really is about showcasing the data as is displayed in Jira. Now, besides just displaying the data in Jira, you have the ability. So if you are doing ranking, you're talking to your product manager and you want to rank um, epics or stories, you can do so uh, by dragging and dropping here. And notice that it's tracking my changes that I'm doing within your advanced roadmap uh, by looking here at the top right corner. You could also see um, stories and epics which are orphan. And by orphan, that, that is in many of the mature organizations that I work with, they want to have all the stories tied to an epic. And the reason why is because they want to be able to track the impact of that story against what feature, what functionality. And then so they can track their progress over time. Um, sometimes we create stories, we forget to bind them to an epic. Um, you could do all this in, J in Jira itself, but then you have to open the story, go to the epic link, remember the name of the epic that is supposed to be bound to. Uh, and so there's a lot of steps that you have to go through where here I can just simply just drag and drop this story. And so for example, if I'm talking to my product manager, or my engineering manager, and we agree, hey, this, is, this actually belongs to OCT 73. I can just drag it and drop it in OCT 73. That's done. It has done the binding and it has updated the epic link field. So you have some drag and drop functionalities um, that you can actually do in this section here in the far left uh, region. Um, in the far right region, you have this open area, open space here. And this is really the Microsoft Gantt chart-like view. Right now it looks kind of empty, very boring, right? But allow me to explain that these blue dots represents the fixed versions that you have in Jira, which represents in themselves either releases or PI planning milestones that you're trying to hit as a team, right? And so uh, by clicking on them, you can actually see the name of the releases and whether they're on track. So there's some uh, significant information. The yellow line represents today and it moves automatically over time as every day progresses. It just out of refreshes itself. It is not until you enable the what is called the roll-up functionality and roll-up, what it does is that as you have epics, the epics themselves the tool supports Kanban and Scrum, so I will make a disclaimer. But when you're doing, when you're using Scrum um, as your framework, um, you when you add stories to a sprint, a Jira Advanced Roadmap is it smart enough to grab 
the start date and the end date of the sprint where the story has been um, uh, assigned to. And so when you do a roll up, what it does, it just grabs the start date and the end dates and it rolls them up. So hence the reason why uh, when I selected the roll up functionality here, suddenly you see these candy cane bars or these Gantt chart view bars and is summarizing that each one of these epics have stories that started in this case in May, right? May 15, these areas. And based on the springs that those stories were added, the latest story is really part of the October a spring that is allocated for October 2nd. So um, you have the ability to see the status by the colors. So the, the colors that are selected here in the configuration is I'm asking the tool, hey, reflect the status in the work from the workflow. So blue is in progress, uh, green is uh, done, and the gray uh, dark color represents in the to-do state. So basically what it's telling me is that this epic there's nothing happening underneath. Um, and if it doesn't have a bar, it means that that, that epic hasn't been assigned to any, anything in the workflow, anything, anything. There's nothing underneath that has been started altogether. So um, now that, that in itself is useful, but it becomes even more useful when you apply the capabilities of filters. And filters is, what you will call JQL in in Jira, right? Except that here you don't have to learn JQL. You essentially just drag and uh, and select, uh, or drop and select. And so basically, in this case, I'm looking at a lot of data in the back window, just cleaning up a few things. I have 22 epics that I'm showcasing here, <clears throat> but with the power of filters. I can literally just ask the tool, you know, for the purpose of my next SOS meeting, we're really going to be focusing in the October release. Let's just, let's just uh, say. So I select the fixed version that is associated with the October release for either two teams or a single team, because this view is made out of two teams. And so let's say I want to focus in the optimized Agile team. Notice that from the 22 epics that we have, now this has been shrunk only to seven epics. So the, the filters are, are meant to really drive the optics as to hone down the information as to what are you uh, want to really use and drive the meetings with to make it more meaningful. And the filters can be combined. So for example, in your case scenario, in this case scenario, I have some things that are done and all I want to do is really focus my conversation in things that are in progress or in the to-do state, meaning things are done, they're done, and we don't care to discuss any further about them. You have the option or the ability to say, yeah, just show me then, filter out everything that is done. And the theme that I'm trying to illustrate here is that the filters, you can use them. Um, they're not mutually exclusive. You can combine them to really massage the information that you want to present to your audience. And in this case, you can see the um, epics that have some kind of a progress trajectory as it relates to today in the context of the fixed version that we're trying to meet, right? So that we want to complete. So, um, and if you expand, then you can see actually the stories and so, some of the stories that are done are grayed out and things that are um, still in flight show bold, if you will. Um, so that's that that explains hopefully or illustrates a concept of the Jira information in the one side, the timeline view, and finally, I haven't discussed, and this is where I want to showcase um, this section here where I'm hovering, which is called fields. And when I click on the header, the fields expand and it exposes to me fields that I have added into this view. Now, these fields are completely configurable, uh, meaning 
these fields are really based on fields that are found in Jira, whether they are the um, out of the box fields or they are custom fields. Most of the fields Jira Advanced Roadmap will be able to bring them in with the exception perhaps of a few instances. For example, multi-line fields like the description field in Jira is not supported in, in uh, Jira Advanced Roadmap. But every other field that you'll have in, in Jira, like priority, assignee, um, you are able to bring them in. And besides just being able to see the data, you can also edit data from here. For So for example, if you're doing a spring planning session um, and you are assigning stories to a sprint, right? Let's say, for example, I want to move this into sprint uh, 10. You could do so from here. You could also assign it to a specific uh, engineer within your team. So it happens that in this case scenario, in this uh, fictitious environment, I only have one engineer, which happens to be me. And so I probably will be assigning everything to me. And similarly, you can continue to keep editing information here and change the fixed version if you decide as a team that this is a story or an epic that we are going to do in a subsequent release. I can move it from October to whatever releases that I have in my Jira environment. In this case, I can assign it to December if I wanted to as well. So you have the ability to not only view data, but also edit data. And this in itself is very powerful because I have worked with a number of product management teams, which during their um, backlog refinement sessions in Jira itself, you cannot sort. Uh, however, so they, those, those teams export the data into Excel, then they sort in Excel, they do some magic, you know, some rearrangements in terms of the priorities and everything else. And then they have to go back and re-enter the data manually into JIRA. Well, in JIRA Advanced Roadmap, you have the ability also to do, um, in this case, I'm gonna restrict or shrink that I don't wanna see stories, right? So I'm doing backlog refinement. So I wanna do stories to not subtasking in this case, I'm just gonna select stories to stories. So I'm minimizing my view just to showcase stories. And then I have the ability to sort. So if I'm doing a backlog refinement session, in some of the fields where you have this arrow for sorting, then now as a product manager, I can focus in refining those stories which have the highest priority if I'm using that priority field within JIRA, right? So many organizations use it, some organizations don't use it, uh, but if you are using it, then this gives you the capability of sorting and then you can then start working from the highest priority items to the lower priority items. And, and if you define or decide that, for example, uh, a particular story needs to be upgraded to a higher priority, you can reassign the priority here based on conversations you're having as a team and then send that data back to uh, JIRA, right? So that you are able to um, sync all the information that you have here and you don't have to enter it in JIRA. You can just have it sync into JIRA. So uh, there's no dual entry, thank goodness. Um, I'm looking at my uh, my little list of items that I wanted to cover here. I, I got a multiple screens. Um, another item here that I want to also showcase that is very powerful in your advanced um, roadmap. Is, Ralph, gonna... sorry, I didn't mean to yes. interrupt. Um, there are a couple of questions here in the chat. Would you like to take them now or do you want to wait uh, till the end? Like I said at the beginning, I, I'd like to as much as possible. Just okay, there's a lot it. of material that I still have to cover. Sure. Um, and then we can, we can, I can, I'd be happy to come back and then address those questions in a specific area. So do, do make a note though, so that sure. we don't miss those questions. Uh, but thank you for your questions, by the way. And thank you for letting me know. Um, another element that I want to uh, suggest here that is actually very powerful is the ability for, um, to showcase dependencies across teams. So, and the dependencies can be showcased in, in a couple of ways. Um, now you can define dependencies here, meaning Jira Advanced Roadmap, or you can de de define dependencies in Jira. It doesn't really 
uh, matter. But if you do it in Jira, um, you want to reopen Jira Advanced Roadmap so that it picks up any updates. But notice here how I have incoming dependencies, meaning I am dependent on another team to do work. So therefore, it's an incoming dependency into me. And it's not within my team alone. I have other teams. So in this case, uh, in this combined view, I have the R2 team, the Rebel team, and then I have the OCT team. So my dependencies are combined. Also, my dependencies are not issue type specific. So I can have a dependency of an, an epic against a story, a uh, story against a subtask, a bug against an epic. So it, it really doesn't restrict you in any ways. And you can add dependencies here across the teams that are part of your view. Uh, so for example, I want to add this dependency that I'm blocked by these subtasks. And just by simply just adding it, suddenly becomes part of my story of dependencies that I have. Similarly, oh, um, I clicked that too early, shows you the status, and it also shows you who owns those dependencies. Um, this is actually particularly useful, especially when you're trying to hustle through the work and you want to reach out to the other team. Now, this information is available in Jira, don't get me wrong, but for you to see it in Jira, you have to open the story, you know, go into a fishing expedition down into the dependency section, open it and start opening those into separate tabs so that you can keep track of, you know, and discover the data. Well, guess what? Here you have all the information in one single row that makes it a little bit more compelling and easier for me to discover and have um, conversations a little bit in, in a nimble way, in a more effective way. Likewise, you have outgoing dependencies. And these are um, teams who are dependent on, in, me, in this case, on me, right? And so it could be within my own team. It could be a dependency against, a, in this case, the Rebel team, which is my other team. And I can map them either in Jira, and I can also add them here as well. Um, dependencies are also, and this is a functionality that I'm proud of <clears throat> contributing to the tool when I was uh, consulting for Atlassian during the development of this tool. You have the bubble, the badges, I call them the elephant ears. And so this actually showcase in the Gantt chart view, the dependencies that you see in the columns, you can see them also in the Gantt chart view. And by cl clicking on the bubble, it will show you the list of dependencies that you have incoming or the list of dependencies that you have outgoing. Um, a feature that was added subsequently, which uh, at the request of some folks who like to see the lines of dependencies, right? Interconnected between epics and stories and so on. Um, the folks from the your advanced roadmap team, they added the ability for you to actually see the dependencies in lines. So for those folks who are really line inclined, visually oriented, you can actually, if I have any dependencies, you'll, you'll see the lines that show the outgoing dependencies into the incoming dependencies and across the board, right? So if I am uh, seeing both teams, now I'm dragging the information from the different teams. Now I start seeing more lines all together. That shows me the dependency view between the teams. And finally, there's actually uh, a, a view where you can actually see dependencies as well. Uh, and I believe this has been a, a, a recent update for me. So they. This, uh, since I'm using the cloud version, there's always a new update that they actually do, and it's, it's a surprise, a Pandora box, and they're really powerful updates. Um, so you have the ability to actually see the dependencies also in in a report-like format, if you will. So um, it, it's it, the dependency report is one of those reports that a lot of people uh, like, right? Where they can actually see now across the issue types, the dependencies, and they can then uh, see how they are interconnected and where the teams are at so that you can have conversations with those team members as well. So it, it all depends how you wanna leverage the data. The theme here is that there's a couple of ways that you can access the data. 
uh, you're not limited to or restricted to us, just a single way of doing it, which is um, quite compelling uh, for a tool that is included in already in, in your JIRA instance. So you don't have to pay anything extra and you can just start using it today. For example, after this session, if you feel that, you know, hey, this is really good, I can use it right away. All you have to do is just go into your instance and start building the views uh, following this uh, this recording. And you should be able to actually to get most of, of the uh, data that you would want to showcase. Um, let's see, I covered the uh, rows and columns and the editing. I'm almost at the end of my journey, so I'll, I'll be able to onboard some of the questions. So bear with me with patience. We cover dependencies, ah, a very, very important topic, which um, as you can see here um, in this sample, you, you see lines that are yellow and you see lines that are uh, white. And I call it a PP yellow because it's this fainted yellow color, which is very mild. Um, and then you see this button here that's called warnings. Um, the tool, does a decent job at proactively providing you heads up. You know, you 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 have some some issues with certain elements in your project, right? With in your in your product development cycle, and so you have this triangle with a bang in the center, which tells you what those issues could be or are. Now you could access those warnings either by hovering over the specific issue types, right? And so not only it warns you, but also it gives you um, a possible solution to remedy the, the blocker or the issue, right? In this case, it's telling me either, in the second sentence, either update the due date or set the dates to, to on before the due date. And so this case scenario, what it's relating to is that some product management, or program managers, they want to specify, you know, hey, this epic, we don't know when it's going to get done, right? Because we're working at the story level within the epics, right? At the, but we'd like this function to be done by, in this case, August 30th. And guess what? August 30th is in the past. And that's the reason why it's giving me the warning because it's in the to-do state. And so to resolve that warning, if I follow the prescription from the tool, it's suggesting to me, you know, hey, just move it into the future. And so the moment I move it into the future, it will start correcting that in those warnings. Now you have also the ability to see the warnings by clicking on the warning view. And it will have a hyperlink that shows you for each one of the warnings, it points out to how many issues you have. And you can, by clicking on the hyperlink, you can actually see those issues uh, all together, right? So um, it's, everything is hyperlinked. So, so you have you can access the data and start resolving issues uh, right away. And this is a new function that they just added, which is um, at least new to me based on the last time I used the tool, which it is I can filter out issues, meaning the things that are bold, not not grayed out, are the things that I have issues. So I can then focus my attention into resolving those issues. Now, um, one thing that actually I found to be very beneficial to a lot of the teams that I work with, especially when it comes down to release management or, or program manage the projects, is that when we are, when the teams are doing spring planning, um, especially if they're using SAFE, they, there's a tendency to plan multiple sprints into the future. And I'm not saying that's a good practice or a bad practice, it just happens to be a practice, right? And so when you're in JIRA, you have uh, no uh, sense of the timeline that you're trying to hit the milestone where you're trying to ship because it's not really visible here. You just see the sprints and you're trying to add things from the backlog into a sprint. But let's say I have a story here, whether I do it in Jira or I do it in Jira Advanced Roadmap, I have a story that is in the to-do state and I happen to put it in a sprint way into the future, right? Um, my milestone here for this release, let me actually apply the, the release fix version so that I can filter all my issues down. Okay, great. Look at that, easy. And let's 
say in this case scenario, I have this one story that is called Least Car for Rent. This is a rental car project. And I happen to put it into the future, into let's say spring 14, because I'm just talking and we're trying to allocate based on the people that we have and our capability and our velocity and everything else. Uh, so when I'm doing the spring planning session, I added this into spring 14 and notice what happened. Geo Advanced Roadmap took my fixed version and marked it red. Now, this is a simple project. I had just a few epics, but imagine if you have, you know, I've worked with teams where they have 50 or 70 features, right? It's a combined project. If you have multiple features which are putting your project at risk, the first thing that happens is that roadmap marks the fixed version that is at risk red. So it allows you to identify, huh, what is, we have an issue here with our, we have a risk with our release. I can then use your advanced roadmap to root cause. So if you have multiple epics, which are crossing the line of your end date, you'll see them actually listed here in the back, in the gun chart view. And using roadmap, you can then root cause and start going one by one to understand, okay, I'm going to expand this epic to see what the issue is. Oh, I can see the one story that happens to be exceeding the timeline. And I have two choices. I can march, I've got four choices. I can do nothing, <laughs> which is not what we want to do. Um, you have the ability to drag and drop. So here in the Gantt chart view, you can actually drag this timeline and move it. So it's highly interactive, stretch it or move it. And notice that my fixed version actually is now not at risk. Or ideally what you wanna do in this case, since this is a Scrum team, is actually reassign this into a sprint that is within the fixed version, within the fixed version timeframe, right? So in this case, Spring 10 um, is within the time frame that we have allocated here, this project is supposed to release in October 31st. And so it moves the story again into a safe area and there, therefore it marks the release blue, meaning the risk that you, we have identified in the context of exceeding the release has been managed, right? So now you can just focus on um, as a project manager or release manager, or even product manager on addressing those issues, which are in the bank box here. And so um, it allows you to really curate your release or your product management, your product cycle, so that you can identify issues early and provide mitigation plans early enough, right? Um, the last things that, I, that I'll mention is that um, you notice how I am um, clicking around freely without any concerns of, you know, am I, am I changing my plans too much, my project too much, uh, making all kind of crazy decisions. And let's say all of us are together in a planning session and we are working till 11 o'clock at night because we have a crush time or a crush deadline that tomorrow we're gonna present to our BPs. And in the process of us getting together to till so late, we happen to be drinking tequila or whiskey, whatever it is that you uh, favor in your respective homes. And we're making all kind of creative changes here. And the next morning when we arrive, we want to review some of the changes just to make sure that everything is cool. And then suddenly we realize perhaps all that tequila drinking actually allows us to be way too creative. Fear not. I mean, all these changes that are being done in your advanced roadmap have not been sent to Jira just yet. The review changes button, which is a blue button up here that I'm hovering over, is tracking all the changes that we have done during our session. And by clicking on it, I have the ability to look at all the changes that we did. And if there are more than this um, you know, dozen of changes, I mean, you'll see the entire list. You can review the changes, who made the changes, uh, what was the change altogether, and then decide whether you want to save these changes to Jira 
So it will send the changes from Jira Advanced Roadmap into Jira. Or if we decided, you know, hey, this was just really the whiskey talking and we did the wrong thing, we can discard the changes. And what Jira Advanced Roadmap does is, is two separate databases. It has its own database. It just rolls back the changes within the Jira Advanced Roadmap plans without affecting Jira. And it puts you back in the original view that you had at the moment that you started the session, right? Now you could select one item or you can select multiple items and send them to Jira or not. So um, you have the ability to, to discard or save changes to Jira uh, based on your decisions, right? So it's not automatic. Unlike Jira line that it has ability to auto uh, sync. Um, and lastly, um, I will showcase uh, uh, another out of the many functionalities. There's a lot of functions I'm not covering, um, but another function that is quite useful is that um, many teams leverage Confluence to communicate, right? Doing uh, whether it's SOS or project reporting scenarios where we're talking to a larger audience. Um, and so here I have Confluence. And in this sample page that I have, I have a summary of, of my project, right? I'm outlining risk. Confluence allows me to type more freely, right? Um, but like the status summary that I added, I also can embed Jira Advanced Roadmap into my Confluence page. And there are two flavors of it. You could use two macros. Either you could use the iframe mark macro, or you could use um, Confluence also comes with the advanced roadmap macro. Um, and so in this case scenario, the cool thing is that I have embedded a Jira advanced roadmap view into Confluence for the audience that doesn't care, like my VPs or directors of engineering or my VP of product management or marketing. A lot of the times they don't care to go to Jira. They don't want to even learn how to use it. So guess what? I'll bring it to Confluence where they can actually see it with everybody else. And the cool thing is that it's really a read-only view. This is not a static view though. And I, and I should clarify that. Meaning, um, nice thing about Jira Advanced Roadmap is, is that whether you do it in the, in the real view here, you have the ability to have progress by issue count, so I can see the progress of my epics. Well, guess what? I can see that data here as well. I can see my progress of my epics by percentile. So every time somebody's updating underneath the Jira project, my engineering, my test engineers, and my developer, my developers, um, whoever is making changes in Jira, the more, every time I come into this page or I refresh a page, it will pick up those changes. So rather than having a static view, like you will do, like when putting this information in a PowerPoint presentation, that's dead data, meaning it's stale data, things could be changing underneath and you, you will not know it unless you have access to Jira. Guess what? Here, the information, dependencies that have been mapped at the last minute, well, you will see all that information being picked up here. And when you're in a meeting and you're having conversations, you can actually apply all the filters and make all kind of yeah, assumptions uh, and, and changes in terms of changing the filters to change the view. So, but all those changes that you do, like in this case, I'm just gonna apply, I wanna see the, October release for the two teams and all the epics or the features that they have assigned to them, it will never affect your original view. It's a read-only view. However, you're able to share it with the world via Confluence interactively. So um, this in itself has proven to be very beneficial to all of the folks who are trying to get away from PowerPoint. I mean, the data is there in Jira. Why would you want to recreate it in any other ways? Might as well just put it in Confluence and leverage it from there. So um, that said, I think I cover at least a lot of the topics that I wanted to provide in this high level overview. And I want to uh, give you the benefit of asking questions.
question. So uh, by all means, I mean, uh, it, uh, I'm, I'm ready questions. to take the first question. We have some questions in the chat. Have yeah. Have we addressed those yet? Yeah, no, no, I can I can go. Um, sure. So James is asking, does this change uh, anything on any of the boards, or is it simply read only filtering view? Um, the, when it's embedded into Confluence, it's only read only. When it's, when you're working in Jira plans, it, the answer is it could change things in the board. So for example, if I change the story to a different sprint, um, say for example, I'm going to put the story in sprint 12, I will be changing sprint 12 for as long as I click on the review changes and I save that change into Jira. Otherwise, that information is really retained with the Jira Advanced Roadmap. And I can, if I decide that that was a bad change on my part, it was a mistake, we we're doing what if scenarios, I can also discard the changes so that it's not reflected anywhere. Uh, thank okay. you. And James, hope that answers your question. There's an next one from Maru uh, asking, can Jira or any of its plugins plot some scatter plots with some of the filter fields as axis dimensions. No, don't quite understand the question. Okay, the can you, yeah. Uh, Mario, do you wanna come off mute and ask the question yourself? Yeah, sure. But those, those filter fields you have there, status, progress, whatever, flags, uh -huh. right? Can, can Jira plot some scatter plots with one or several of these status fields on the axis dimensions. So you'd have one priority, one story points, and one, you know, sprint and whatever, and then show you how many of these, where where each one of these um, um, work items or entries um, or user stories lie on that scatter plot. So I can see, for example, um, I have too many flags for this one particular um, assignee, or um, everything with uh, priority higher than two is, Right now is flagged, stuff like that, visually. Yeah, so there's some limitations as to what you uh, can do. Um, I mean, you could, in a certain way, and I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure this will answer your question um, in, in its entirety, but you could kind of like trick the system. So the, the short answer is probably no, but the, Long answer is that if you play around with enough with the tool, you're going to find out that you are able to actually, by using the filters and perhaps some of the other capabilities that the tool has, you'll be able to get some of that information that you're after. For example, in this case scenario, I, in the context of this release, I selected the active sprint. And so if I am trying, let's say I have a team that is larger than one. Right now, the team is only one person, which would be me. I can uh, take my view and say, I want to see stories all the way to subtask in the context of sprints. And I want to sort or group by assignee. So if I have one developer or uh, seven developers, you know, engineers working in this pod, I'll be able to by sorting by assignee, I'd be able to see if one engineer has too much work on their plate versus an engineer who does not. Now, that doesn't mean that that one engineer that does not have enough work just because he has two stories, it, it doesn't have enough work. It could be that those two stories are long poles. And so, but at least it will allow, it gives you the visuals to have conversations across the different engineers and say, hey, can we load balance this work? Because we're overloading in this case, Raf and say, for example, Jose or Mike uh, can take, or, or Mary can take actually additional stories and the tool will give you the visuals to actually see the, how everything is being load balanced as well as the additional information that you have associated with, with the fields. Um, so um, those not quite, address the question I think that you have, but you just, what I'm trying to allude is that you have some abilities to actually filter out and then identify and and, uh, and do some tweaking in the team's uh, performance, if that is your objective. 
No, thanks. That's, that's very helpful. So. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Maru, um, for Yes, uh, Ella's, Ella's question, I don't think she's on the call. Uh, she can watch it later anyways. It, it says, uh, is it possible to group features or epics by PI field instead of fixed version slash release? Well, that's an interesting question. And the question becomes is, what is, what is the PI field uh, that they're using? And what is the structure of it in, within JIRA? Um, and that is, I have the ability to, if they have a PI field that they're using, you could actually add the, the custom field, right? Of, that they're using to outline say Q3 2020 or, or you know 2023, if they are using that for PI fields. A suggestion that I have given teams, which are using the fixed version is that <clears throat> some, some teams will use, will have a fixed version that represents releases and some teams will have fixed versions that represents uh, uh, quarterly planning or PI planning, right? If you're doing it, PI planning at the quarterly base. And so what that allows you to do is that um, you can assign to the epics for, or in stories that are for Q3 2023 or for Q4 2023, which is upcoming, the fixed version at the story and the epic level and then you can create views that are uh, quarterly based. So you could either, and by, by creating a view, I mean um, Jira Advanced Roadmap has the ability. For example, in this case, I have this view, but I also have a Q3 2023 view. And so what I have done here is I'm, it's this really Jira Advanced Roadmap, but it allows me to, to actually, um, create a view with specific set of filters. So, you know, if I happen to have Q3 2023 here and I'm filtering everything. So it's, for example, in December, that would be work that would be in the Q4. I could save this view and rename this view obviously to Q4 2023. And so when I'm having conversations with my team at the release level, I could use this view, right? Which is my previous view that I have. And whenever I wanna switch the conversations to the PI planning, rather than creating and clicking on the filters to create what the view is for the PI planning, I can simply just click on the Q3 2023 and it will recall the fixed versions that I apply to it. So therefore I can switch the conversation very quickly to talk about, okay, now let's talk about in the context of the next quarterly planning session. So <clears throat> um, if, if your team chooses to create a custom field to track the quarter assignments, you could do that as well here. As long as you assign, you have the discipline to assign the, the uh, quarterly uh, custom field to the stories and the epics so that you can then have a summary of the stories and the epics that are for that quarter. Or you could leverage very well the fixed version by creating a fixed version that's called uh, Q4 2023. And Jira uh, allows you to have multiple fixed versions in the fixed version field. So you could have a release that is occurring is in December, but you could also overload that field and put the Q4 2023 so that you can actually leverage this fixed version field to actually filter that. Uh, First Republic Bank, for example, which used to be a client of mine, they're no longer in business, as we all know. Um, they used to do that very effectively. And at least as an engineering practice, it was very, 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 very cool to see how they were able to whip a view very quickly by just fix, uh, clicking the fixed version for the Q session that they wanted to talk about at the BP or you know, the big hierarchy level. Hopefully that answers the question. Thank you, Ralph. I think uh, Hela would be able to watch the response in the channel, YouTube channel later. So Abhijit yeah. is asking this question. Uh, can we use team information created for one plan in another plan with some common tickets filtered? Um, you could aggregate uh, the, the, the information from one team into another team and create a plan. Uh, that's 
uh, hopefully that's that's the that's the crux of what what's been trying to be solved here. There's no re- limitation. The the only limitation that I know of with the tool when you're aggregating multiple teams is that um, if during the creation process you add a lot of teams and they, it exceeds five thousand rows, the teams the the view itself starts to crawl. But there are tricks and tweaks that you could do. Uh, the performance really, uh, by crawling, I mean, the performance really goes down. Um, it becomes very slow to refresh. Um, but there are tweaks that you can do. For example, when when you're creating a, the, the plan, you have the ability to say, you know, just bring me information for um, on the, my issue sources. I have exclusion rules. And in the exclusion rules, I can say, you know, for releases that have been marked released already, don't bring me that data because that data is no longer valid for me to discuss. I mean, there's are things that are already left at home. Uh, and, and and so basically I can just simply just tell the tool, just, just select things that are un- unreleased. There are many teams which I trace to like everything, released and unreleased. And it, it, in more in some instances, when I point that out, they realize, oh, I don't need to know what's already released. That's how that's out there already. I just really need to focus my my conversations as to things that are on the deck. So hopefully um, that answers the question. But yeah, you can combine um, basically as many boards and as many projects with knowing that there's a performance hit if you exceed a certain number of rows. Right. Thank you, uh, Ralph. Sure. Uh, the next question is Pradipa is asking. I do not see plans, plans option in my JIRA, but I do have structure links, big picture. Should I do any settings? Yes, yeah, so um, I answered that in the, also in there, if you scroll down to the bottom, that advanced roadmaps plan is a feature of premium. So you have to have the, either a premium, your, your organization has to have the uh, premium and enterprise subscription of the JIRA software, right? It, Either, either or, either you have premium or or you have enterprise. If you have the basic Jira, uh, Jira Advanced Roadmap is is not by default there. Um, now I have worked with organizations which have been using Jira for a long time and they have an enterprise edition, for example. Um, but it, and so when we root cause the issue. A lot of the times is that they have an on-prem version, meaning you have the cloud version and the on-prem version, and they haven't updated Jira, right? So, so if they update the license and they get the latest version of Jira Enterprise Edition, or um, whether it's on the cloud or whether it's on-prem, meaning you have your own servers, you still access it via browser, but it says the 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 big difference is the uh, URL address here. It would not say Atlassian.net. It's coming from a localized URL. Um, it could be an aged version of Jira. And so the easiest thing to do is to reach out to the admin and say, hey, do we have Enterprise Edition? And if so, can we update to the version that has Jira plans included? And, and then- some, there are some times where, you, where an admin would have to go into like settings, products, and then advanced roadmap permissions. Um, and, and then you can check which groups have access to create and view and edit plans. So there could be also a permissions issue as well, I think. Yeah, yeah. But but normally, normally, I mean that that would be true when you are uh under settings, especially when you're trying to create plans. But I haven't hit so far, and I'm not saying that just because I haven't seen it, it's not the case. Um when it comes down to at least being able to see the offering. It's, it's there. I mean, whether you can create plans or not, then that may, could be a permissions issue. Or if you cannot see um, in one of my clients, which I'm not going to say their name, they're very restrictive. And each, all their Jira instance, they don't make it accessible to anybody. You have to go and beg for access. And in which case you don't see their G, the, the Jira's notes from other projects, from other teams within the company, uh, where you don't see anything. So you cannot create anything. However, you still see the drop down here with the offerings of you know view plans or create plans. You just won't be able to do anything unless they give you access at the permission level. Uh, but I mean, it could be a case. I'm not an admin, so it could be the case that Jira plans is being blocked 
which I, I, I don't understand why, but you could, it will coexist with big picture and it can coexist with structure in parallel. Uh, and then at that point, you just pick your poison, <laughs> which one of the tools you want to use. Yeah. I like that. Pick your poison. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so I'll ask the next question is, is can you explain, uh, sorry, can you also show us the capacity management? I was experimenting around the tool, but I wasn't able to find answers to my question. Ah, that's a, that's a tough one. Uh, and the reason why I say I, it's a tough one um, is at least based on my prior experiences with your advanced roadmap is, it's not a very strong tool in capacity management. It does have capacity management, but for me to leverage that, I have to create teams, which I, I, as you can see here, I have no teams added. It's a field within Jira that is enabled, but it's not visible normally in Jira itself. It's available and visible through it here. I can create a team. And the moment that I bound the members of the team, then I can see the capacity management element. I just don't have it set up in this environment here. But if you have, if you're leveraging the teams and you want to connect via LinkedIn, uh, Jamie is, is, is she, she, it, it, it has been part of my effort where we connect offline and we look at things uh, based on her specific needs. The same thing I will all extend to this particular user. If you want to um, look at the capacity management in your environment, it, as long as you're using the teams fields and you're assigning and creating teams, then you'll be able to see, for example, at the sprint level, uh, this this bar here in the timeline view, it will break down the sprints and will show you the, the colors of the health of the sprint. If it's overloaded, it will be red or green and status. It gives you a bunch of other gizmos. Now, if you're not using that, um, uh, some of the teams are happy enough to use capacity management in a primitive, uh, I'm not trying to downplay it, in a primitive way by simply just looking at assignees, for example, um, in the context of the fixed versions of the sprints that they're selecting in the filters. And they can then look at how the work is being distributed. So that's another way of doing it. It depends what you want to do with the capacity management information. Yeah, and and actually, Maru, I or not Maru, Ralph, I, I I love you're so gracious with your time. And Maru suggested we need a, a series on on Jira, and um, so maybe we can, uh, you know, if you're up for it, we can have you back at Scrum Masters of the Universe Meetup for for um, another lesson. And um, and and if that's the case, those of you who are still here, send me what it is you'd like to learn and and we'll we'll find the most common one and we'll 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 see if uh i i'm putting ralph on the spot but i believe he'll come back yeah but enough chocolates uh, sure um, no no <laughs> I this is such letters or something from Pella. <laughs> <laughs> actually um, but that's Ralph, great, there well, are I'm... just sorry, there are just two people waiting on the call still, I think, to be sure. able to get your answers. Um, Lalita, if you're still on call, you have just asked, is this available in Jira server or cloud? I couldn't find the reference to it. If you'd want to come off mute and ask the question yourself. Yeah, I think we run on uh, Jira server uh, in our company. I'm just wanting to see if this needs to be specifically rolled out uh, to the Jira server instances, because I couldn't find Jira roadmap at all uh, in our Jira server. So not sure if it's a, a facility available only in Jira cloud or Jira server. That's what I want to ask. Great question, uh, Lalita. Uh, thank you for jumping, uh, opening the microphone. Um, yeah, as, if you have it on the, it's available on both on the cloud and the on-prem, which is your server is, I just call it on-prem, uh, the localized, the local version. Um, it will be uh, available in your instance if you see plans. If it's not there, uh, it, it, it's, is it possible, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that you either two case scenarios, either you have, a, your, your organization has a older generation of Jira, and they just simply have to update to the latest version of the on-prem, right? Contact Atlassian and, and the admin and then roll out eventually, or uh, that you may not be using the enterprise edition of, of uh, Jira. So either of those two, 
uh, your admin should be able to corroborate that. But but there are it, plans is available in both. I mean, um, I work with organizations which have either cloud or on-prem or a hybrid. You know, some teams have clouds because they're migrating already, and they still have some teams still have the legacy on-prem version, and they all have uh, access to to plans. So, uh, worth worth reaching out to your admin. Does that does that help, Lalita? Yes, that's very helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, Ralph, uh, we want to be mindful of your time. Uh, there are a few more questions that I see here. Do sure. you want to take them and wind it up in ten minutes? Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Great. So Maru has another question. He asked, did you get to show some of the release management features? Uh, Maru, are there any specifics that you are looking for in the context of release management? I it did show some of the some parts that would be relevant for me, so dependencies, but also you know checking through the filters or the fields by looking at releases, but doing roadmaps. I like to draw visual uh, visuals of what I have inside each one of my releases and see which pieces we can move and then look for agreements and handoffs, et cetera. So it's an open question. Uh, did yeah. you show anything related to releases? And uh, No, the, the, the short answer, no. I, 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 the tool is capable, very capable, very good question, in fact. I mean, um, I anecdotally, I had a, a team at Wells Fargo, which was using uh, Mural, which is a tool for collaboration to do the release planning and all that good stuff. And and it was useful until you had a lot of dependencies and then everything became a spaghetti with a lot of lines flying everywhere. Your advanced roadmap shines at that. So to your point, I have not show, showcased that. And to Jamie's point, um, I would love I, you know, I will welcome the opportunity for me to do like, for example, if we want to do a session with JAR for a release manager or such a session for JAR for product or for Scrum Masters, because it is the same tool, it is the same information, it's just a context of how you use the tool and that information that we could do sessions that are specific. But but uh, Maru, to, to answer your question, um, the, the organizations that I have worked with that have leveraged this tool, um, but well, it takes a level of discipline where we have carved out epics that are specific for a release and stories that are specific for a release. And then we apply the fixed versions to, to the epics and the stories so that when you come down to the filters, the cool thing is when, when the organization has that level of discipline, now by applying, for example, in this case scenario, my October release. This is my October fixed version, right? My, the format that I'm using here. Um, now I can, I'm able to articulate for these two teams who are participating, I could have five teams. I have shrunk the amount of epics that I have to specifically the epics and the stories that are targeting that specific fixed version. And then we can talk about dependencies that we are trying to assign within the context of those those releases, right? Based on the fixed versions. Um, so as long as, as long as there is a level of discipline on the organizations to have a con consistent form on the six fixed versions and they assign it, um, you could very well leverage this tool to actually just massage and just shrink the information and have those meaningful meetings where you're showing the optics specific for a specific release that you're trying to manage and march all the way through. Does that make sense? Does that help? Totally it confirms my, my experience. It, it, you'd be surprised at how many organizations don't even have a convention, a discipline convention for naming um, work items and tracing them back to releases and stuff like that. But I was wondering if you would tell me something that my dream would have been if you told me, hey, I can export this into Excel and do magic stuff with uh, pivot tables, or there is a way to do pivot tables inside of Jira, which I, I know I'm dreaming, but... Uh, my short answer for the people, and I have met teams which are uh, doing what you're suggesting about the pivot tables is, is that um, the pain and suffering that and the agony of having to go through all those exp exports and then, because every time you update, you have to then some, somewhere there's a disconnect right of the data is soon enough or later, sooner or later, they realize 
let's just come to an agreement on start using a normalized set of conventions. And one of them is, for example, having conversations. That's where an ATO, uh, Agile Transformation Office comes, or a ATP, however you want to name it, Agile Transformation Practice allows organizations to mature faster and use the tools without having to go to Excel and all that pain. Because then now you start talking and coming to agreements as a group. Here's how we're going to be using the tool. And here how we're going to be using the fields. And then sooner you do have those painful conversations, um, and hopefully you have an agile coach or somebody who can drive those agreements, um, then you don't have to have people table. So you can stop having those dreams or nightmares and then just leverage the tool that is, because the data is in Jira, right? So, and you don't have to export to, to Excel anymore. But okay. I mean, Sorry, Ralph, I'm just going to quickly um, do a rapid fire so session with you because we just have three minutes left. Um, sure. Saval asks again, is there a feature issue type available in advanced roadmaps? Uh, feature issue types is a custom issue type. Um, you can create out of Epic that custom issue type called features. Um, and yeah, it will support custom issue types. Okay, great. Uh, the next question Mara is asking is, what is the risk calculation based on? critical path and durations or resources, for example, some issue tagged by someone textually? Um, the, the risk calculations that you see, at least in the samples that I'm showing here, are based on the fields that you're leveraging out of the box. So for example, the due date field, um, but also uh, if you have uh, items that are sitting in an old sprint, it will raise those issues as well as a risk when as the spring is closed, but the item is in the to-do state and it's sitting on a spring that's sitting in the past. Uh, so it's a lingering item and it will give you suggestions on how to correct those issues. Okay, next. Great. Um, Niranjana is asking, I've seen some diamonds come up on roadmaps. How to generate them and what to, do they represent? The diamonds, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the diamonds is what I'm calling here the triangles. Uh, Niranjana is still on call. If you would quickly like to come and ask the question, Niranjana. Yeah. So, what do the triangles exactly represent then? What is it? I'm sorry. What do the triangles actually represent then? Oh, uh, they represent warnings, and so by hovering over them in in the uh, Jira pane view here. You can actually see uh, it will it will tell you if it's this issue or if it's a children underneath. It will let you know this issue is fine. There's a children underneath that 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 have uh, issues, and it will put a triangle right next to each one of the issues that may have uh, a warning. But you could also as access the warnings through here. Uh, so basically, it's just warnings that 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 with the dates or the execution and just trying to warn you as a as a manager hey you know you have something as i mentioned earlier you have you could have an item that was in spring say four and we're in spring 10 and that item still sitting on that sprint old sprint because it was not moved over by jira when the spring was ended and it's sitting there in a to-do state so therefore uh, you you either move it into a future sprint or remove the sprint so that is a candidate for a future sprint planning session. Otherwise, you run the risk of not getting it done. But but the tool will actually give you all these kind of warnings. And there are hyperlinks. So if you don't want to go into a fishing expedition, you can just simply click on the number count and it will show you what the issues are. And then you can then open that and it will take you to the specific issue in Jira. So it's everything is interconnected. Right. Um, and the last question for the day uh, is uh -huh. Claire is asking, how can you set the incoming dependencies to both blocked by and dependent on? Oh, um, I think by default, the tool will only allow you to select uh, a single issue type, right? You've got um, both shown there, though. You've got is blocked by and is dependent by. So how right. do you get it to choose both? Or show both. 
Uh, oh, you can change it there. Okay. Yeah, you could change it here, but you, uh, I, I, maybe I'm misunderstanding your question, but basically when, when I select, for example, this is block by, if I want to select it's dependent by, it will not allow me to select both this one or, or the other. Does that make sense? Clear? Um, but you're, you're showing both and you have the, the online version. I've got the server version and mine only shows is blocked by. It's not showing my is dependent on. Ah, Ah, oh, I, I get it. I get it. And I see now where you're coming with your question. Great. Thank you for the clarification. You yeah. uh, will have to ask your, uh, in JIRA, if you happen to have all the dependencies, um, by default, JIRA Advanced Roadmap will support the three out-of-the-box dependencies. However, you can ask your admin. Let's like say, for example, if in JIRA you have um, I've been with organizations that they have 36 dependency types. I don't know why, but they do. And all you have to do is in Jira Advanced Roadmap under the settings, you have to go in and add to the dependency tables all the dependencies that you want to support from Jira. I see. And it will too, and it will support them all. Uh, a side effect of that is that if your organization happens to have, let's say, for example, more than these dependencies. They have some other creative dependency types that they created. It, then those issues will not show up in JIRA. So you have that you have to have somebody who really marshals, you know, hey, when you create a dependency, justify it. Let's agree that we need that dependency and then add it to both JIRA and JIRA Advanced Roadmap uh, so that it shows up in both sites. That makes okay. sense? That does. Thank you. Yeah. Feel free uh, to reach out with additional questions in that context because that's a issue, a, a interesting topic. Right, so I've uh, again pasted the link, the LinkedIn link to reach uh, to connect to Ralph. And that's all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you all. And we oh, promise man. we thank will you, get Anu, to Ralph. For, uh, thank yeah. you, Anu, for, uh, for moderating the questions. And Ralph, thank you so much for coming and sharing again, so generously sharing your time and knowledge and um, and and we'll chat later about maybe doing a series if you're interested. And um, yeah. and um, so more to come on that, everyone. And um, I just want to thank everyone else for being here. I um, appreciate the extra time as well, Ralph. So um, absolutely. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are in this world. And, um, and yeah. I hope I hope also this information was of use to to everybody here. I mean, and those who will see the video as well. So, absolutely, it's I would say it's very timely for me. It was just at a point where I was trying to just get to know more about it, and okay. having my execs actually getting more interested in the advanced roadmap. I was like, okay, I was gonna find out how to understand it, and then I saw this upcoming. Like, wow, that was so timely, and it's been very fun. Fantastic. And I Thank you mention, so much. Once you start using um, plans for the first time, you'll get an email from Atlassian saying, Oh, I see you're using plans. And then it gives you some more information um, so and documentation that, that would be of interest to you. Um, awesome. So this was this was the basic um, you know, uh, drink from the fire hose kind of session, but um, <laughs> but there is a lot of documentation out there on your advanced roadmaps. Check that out as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and if you're James and, and the rest of the audience, if you have uh, particular questions, uh, feel free to connect with me via LinkedIn and shoot me a question. I mean, I, I, I've been using this tool since the inception. And awesome. so I'll be, able, I'll be happy to kind of provide you a quick, you know, hey, you know, yeah, sure. You, you can go to YouTube or you can Great. reach out to me, whichever you prefer. Thank you, Great. Ralph. That was very generous. I See, I told you guys he was a kind, yeah. kind man. So, uh, yeah. Anyway.